Ich habe hier jetzt äh, bei mir Snowblind, Pleasant Company und äh, Pleasant Company Games und Rob, der es uns vorstellt. Das Ganze wieder auf Englisch, deswegen wechsle ich mal wieder die Sprache. Hi Rob. Hallo. What game did you bring us here? <laughs> uh, this is called Snowblind Race for the Pole. It's a, uh, it's a press your luck a risk management game. Okay. Uh, so the object of the game is to get your, get your team or your, your flag as far to the South Pole as possible. And the game involves drafting dice from an action board and moving men, explorers and crates um, as far as logistics go towards the South Pole. Um, the, the, how the game works is that on your turn you will choose one of the actions on the action board and you will try and you will take the dice that's next to the action. You will then take the action that's on the action board, which is moving men of a specific color and their crates and then you will roll the dice after you have taken that action. So in that example, let's say you are this, this player and you take the die, what happens? So there are two different types of actions in the game. There are low risk actions, which are the six sided dice because it's got less faces. And there is an eight sided dice, which is a higher risk action, but you get a bonus for taking this action. Okay. So in a, in a basic example of a turn, you would take a dice from the action board. In this case, I would take the, uh, the captain I move the captain forward with three crates, like this. After I've moved this captain, I then roll my dice. And the, the dice are risk dice. So okay. for each dice result, you compare it to a risk dice chart. One, two, three, you're always safe. Mm -hmm. Man by himself, company, two men together, or tense, you're always safe. But as soon as you have four or higher, then it becomes dangerous. So here in the situation, man by himself, he would get exposure. Okay. But if he had had company, two men together, or in a tent, he would have been safe on four. Okay. So, so in this case, he's not safe. Let's have a closer look at this card. So this is the risk numbers and what happens. And you can see the more, the higher the number, the more people you need to stay safe. So yes, so, so the, 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 the core mechanic of the game is that the dice are dangerous but you can mitigate the, the danger of the dice by having company or tents. Okay. Tents are obviously protect you on five and six you're never safe. So in this case I rolled a four. My, my explorer is by himself so I would have to take, uh, I would have to pay for this risk exposure by taking one crate off the, uh, off the board. Okay, and if he wouldn't have had any crates with him, is that possible? If he's got no crates with him then you would have to pay the cost of the dice by exhausting the man. Okay. And if you still have to pay the cost, then the man would be removed from the board. Okay. And if your captain dies, which is your red cap, the red spe the space, then you would lose the game. Okay. So let's maybe have a look at the different actions here. Uh, here, we already have this one where you can move your captain and three crates and roll a six-sided die uh, for exposure. So we have a six-sided dice for the same for the uh, scientist, which is a yellow explorer. You would move a yellow explorer plus three crates or the blue dice where you would move the sailor plus three crates. Okay. Then if you take the higher risk action, there's more pips obviously on the dice, so it is more dangerous, but you can then take the basic action plus a bonus action. So in the case of the red dice, you would move the captain plus three crates and you would move an extra man with a crate with the captain. In the case of the scientist, you would take a science token after you moved your scientist And in the case of the sailor, you could turn one of your crates into two food. Food is represented by these cubes, and they work in the same way as crates, except you cannot move food, so they remain okay. in the same space. Then there are a few more other actions. There is a, a very low risk action. There's nothing on the uh, dice, so it's got no pips. And you could then take a low risk action where you move the sailor with one crate or the scientist with one crate. There is a hunting action where you put down two food mm -hmm. and then there are six gray eight-sided dice which lets you take one of three actions, either to build a tent or move any man plus two crates. I guess these are the tents. Those are the tents, which obviously protect you from exposure. Or you can move a, high, a fast action, you move one man with no crates, you roll all your dice and then you move that man again. Okay. After you've done your action, as I say, you roll all the dice that you've got in your dice pool and you compare the results in this chart to where you've ended your turn. So every time your turn comes around, you can choose to pass or take another dice. 
okay. and then you roll all the dice in your dice pool. So I could start with this as we've done before to, to move uh, the leader with three crates and then I decide, oh, I'm lucky, I'll also do this and then need to roll both of them. Correct. And, and each oh, one no, would be a result. Five, so the five is bad and I might have, might have been a bad idea to take another action in this case. Correct. So each time your turn comes around, you, could, you have the option of taking more dice, but each time you take dice, it gets exponentially more dangerous to do. Okay. And the object of the game is, is to try and get your flag as far south as possible. Only your captain can move your flag. At the end of the game, there is a weather deck. Once everyone has passed for the turn, there is a weather deck that gets turned over. And this is a number from one to six. Okay. And this is a, a, single result, a single exposure result that affects everyone for the end of the round, for each of their teams that are furthest to the South Pole. Okay. In this deck, there is a, a pack ice card. When that card comes out, this represents the final round of the game, mm -hmm. and then the game is finished, and final points are scored. Okay. Final points involve where you got your flag, mm -hmm. how far south you got your flag, as well as a few other, you, you get points for building tents, having crates left over in the game, having your explorers back home, you get two points for every explorer back at home base, and one point for every um, research token you collected from your scientist. There's also another additional two points for the medal, which is the first captain to get home after planting the, their flag at the South Pole. Okay. And um, is this, so is there only um, the scoring at the end of the game, or can you also get points before that? There's only final scoring at the end of okay. the game. Once the pack ice card comes out, the game ends, and then final scoring is decided. Great. So, one quick question. The game seems to be really language uh, independent. Do you have German rules in there as well? Correct. The game comes with English, German, and French rulebook in, in, the, in the box. Mm -hmm. And how much does it cost? It's uh, 32 euro at uh, the Essen show, and it retails for 38 euro after the Essen show. And if I see... mm -hmm. So um, we see that it's up to four players, and correct. if I see it correctly in the box, it's one to four players. But how, how, how about one and two players? Does it work, or is it more, more, of, more of something you do if you don't have enough players in the room? Um, the single player game. Um, plays very well, you're playing against the system, so you're playing against the clock, so to speak. So you would have a weather deck that is pre-built, and okay. then your object is to try and get to the South Pole and back before the weather deck completes. Okay. Um, it plays very well with two players, because obviously it is the classic race was in fact, the two nations was in fact England and Sweden. Um, but what we've done within the game is we've included the other two historic nations that were also in Antarctica at the time. So we have the Japanese and we've got the, the old German Republic from the turn of the century. So these are the four nations in the game. So the game scales very well from one to four. Okay. Um, and if the people want to buy it, where can they get it now? So the game is available currently at the Essen Show. Um, after the Essen Show, there are retailers who are, will have the game and the game will also be available online from online purchase. And here in Essen, where's your booth? Our booth is in, uh, in hall, hall 6, and the booth number is C128. Great. Yeah, then thank you. And, sure, it's a um, pleasure. Really, really interesting game, really interesting use of the push, push your luck mechanism and dice drafting. And uh, yeah, and wir, wir sehen uns dann nachher wieder. Wir uh, packen natürlich einmal zusammen, räumen um, und sobald wir alles wieder aufgebaut haben, sind wir wieder im Stream. Bis gleich.